Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey and welcome back for episode 16 of the Satisfactory series here on YouTube. This video is a bit of a break from the normal game progress, I'm just taking some time to relax, build a huge section of our road network, and answer some questions from you guys. Thank you all for the support and help with the series so far. Let's jump right into it. Alright, episode 16. I guess this is a bit of a different one. Um, we're taking a little bit of a break from our regular series to uh, build a bunch of roads and answer some questions. Although I did also throw a couple more things on our to-do list there. We're going to unlock Mark II pipes and uh, set up a little thing for computers. Not like a factory or anything. Um, just so that we'll be ready for next episode where I will be needing to add some more power into the mix. And I think I'd like to go with some more fuel power. So in order to do that, we're going to need a handful of computers. And why not unlock Mark II pipes as well? We have everything ready to go. You only need 1,000 copper sheets, 400 plastic, 400 rubber, and 50 heavy modular frames. Fairly easy to put together. And we're going to send that off. And we'll have Mark II pipes. 600. Milestone reached. What is it? 600. Uh, lines and pumps can now be constructed, capable of handling cubic meters. Throughput of any fluid, as well as providing increased pressure handling for better vertical transport, respectively. Oh, are the Mark II pipes just also better pipes? Because that's sweet. So yeah, we got that for next episode. Now we're going to head on over to where we normally have just a few assemblers set up. I also have one over here making our color cartridges for all our roads. Um, but right here, I cleared out a spot where we had a couple more assemblers before. And we're going to put down a... What, what are they called? Manufacturers? The four inputs. So we can set up for computers. So we're going to get a manufacturer here. Um, I'm going to stick it about... Oh, probably right there. Right about there is fine. And then in the back, I'm going to get some storage containers. A slowly fall from the uh, parachute. There we go. Um, I mean, this only is going to put out, I think it's two and a half per minute, so I don't have to get too crazy here. We'll just stick two down for now. Computers, two and a half per minute. That's fine by me. So we'll just put in a quick splitter here. Right there. Did I not, I didn't face the input the race the right way. There we go. Those can just feed into there. We'll hook this up to power. And so it's going to need circuit boards, cables, plastic, and screws to make computers. So we're going to add in four storage boxes here. I think I can go back up for this. Oh, I missed. I missed. But yeah, thank you guys again for all the support on the series so far. I really appreciate it. Um, I am unfortunately going to miss an upload um, coming up on Thursday here. We don't really upload every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but with my family visiting, I'm actually going to, to Disney for the first time ever. Um, which is going to be a lot of fun, but that it means that I'm going to be away for, for some of next week and, uh, you know, just be able to spend some time with them while they're here. So I will unfortunately miss the upload of Thursday, but I'll be back again the following week for our regular, our regular uploads. The episode 17, more fuel power. Okay. So we needed one of these to be plastic. So I'll just throw all my plastic in here. What else did it need? Forget already. Circuit boards, cables, and screws. I forgot to grab circuit boards. Nuts. I have, any, I have cables on me though, don't I? Cables. And screws. So let me grab... Some more cables, screws, and circuit boards. 
and then we will head out and do our uh, our road building segment. We're gonna make sure we bring a lot of stuff along for that as well. Okay, so I need to head over to our little circuit board factory. Okay, we got everyone loaded up. Circuit boards, cables, screws. Uh, the screws I realized you actually had to turn up to a Mark III conveyor belt because it wants to take in a whole 130 screws per minute. Man, that is a wild recipe for making computers. Um, I think there's actually some alternate recipes that make computers far, far easier. Um, we'll have to keep an eye out in the ma'am, see if we can get our hands on those. We'll head on over here. I think we actually have a research done. We have insulated crystal oscillators. Those look complicated. The coke steel ingot and the coated iron plate that pumps out 75 iron plates per minute. That's a pretty good one. Coke steel ingot takes petroleum coke and iron ore and gives me a hundred steel per minute. Well, that's a lot of steel. But that is a compass. I think I'll go with the coated iron plate. That seems like a good one. Oh no. No, I accidentally hit escape. Let's research again. All right. Do it, do it again. <laughs> okay, so we got our little, after that little fumble, we got our com our computer's line set up. Um, I am holding on to way too much stuff right now. Let's clear things out as we get ready for our road building section. An easy way to know what we're going to need is uh, if we go to our blueprint section here, you can only click up to 100 um, in your to-do list. We're going to be doing way more than that. But if we go to our roads, 4x4 four four flat, Add a hundred. Actually, let's just do this. We'll add a hundred of each since they're similar. We probably won't use a hundred. We may not. Well, we may use a hundred road ramps. You know, you never know. Um, and I forgot to put in some of these. So let's just add in. Because these are similar. So I'm just going to add in a hundred of these as well. So I'm going to need to bring 65,600 concrete. <laughs> 900 colored cartridges, 10,000 iron rods, a bunch of wire, some quick wire, and, some, and a bunch of iron plates. Um, we'll need some extra iron plates or and or concrete. Probably easier to do with iron plates um, because when I build my ramps down, I end up needing to use extra pieces to get it to snap together properly. So um, let's run around and, and collect up some stuff, mainly, mainly concrete. And uh, let's load up that. Where did I leave my truck? We're going to have to load that up full of concrete. That's going to be a, an easy way to get that around. Oh, it's up there on the ledge. So let's go grab our truck. Uh, might as well just drive the truck right over to the... What are you guys doing? You are going to get run over. Let me move this out of the way first. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're going to load this truck up fully full of concrete. That should help speed things along. I don't even know if I have 65,000 concrete right now. In between episodes, I, you'll, you guys will see here in a minute, I did just add a bunch of storage buildings. Uh, uh, you know, it's... Oh, there it is. You can see it already. Um, you know, it's... Uh, well, we, we can admire my shenanigans when we get there. Oh, my, my wheels are not turning. All right. There we go. Okay, let's try and maneuver our way through here. Again, worst possible spot to have my road entrance that we will fix at some point. I'm thinking of just having it turn and bringing it on over this way. So here are my shenanigans of my... Wait, no way these are all full. Oh, just the top ones are. Okay. So, I'll just fly for this. I I added a bunch of storage bins on top of each other, and then I realized I could make a fun... I mean, this looked cooler when it was... when they weren't full. Let's see if I can uh, get this moving again. How do I do this? 
Sort of like that. There we go. So this was a weird thing that I, I thought was was cool at the time. Um, and yeah, there's no, there's no point in it. They don't actually do anything. I think they actually just mess up the storage, to be honest. So we'll just we'll just get rid of them for now. Each one of them essentially just fills each other, though. So I think there's probably not much in each one. There's a decent amount. Okay, so we're gonna move all our con. Oop. We're gonna move all the concrete that we can into the back of this truck. I forgot to take out all the rubber and everything. Oh, that's gonna get filled up real fast. That's okay. I guess this is the one thing I didn't think of was actual how do you reach all the storage? Actually, I'm kind of curious to know how much concrete I can fit in the back of this truck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this here for now. Store all anything that's not going to get used for road building. So I use rods. I use wire and quick wire. I use plates. Everything else can stay. Uh, I'll bring the hard drives too, just because I'm probably going to stick those into the to research as we go along here. So I'm currently holding 19,570 concrete. That's a pretty good amount. I'm going to keep filling up my storage here. Okay. Well, that doesn't hold nearly as much as I hoped it would, but... So I think the store, the truck plus me can hold about 30, about half of this. Um, but we will also need rods and color cartridges and all this other stuff too, so we can't... Uh, we can't just load up on only concrete, unfortunately. So I'm going to grab some of the other stuff. We'll grab the, we'll grab like maybe 400 color cartridges for now. We'll grab about half the rods. Um, I guess I don't really need too much more wire, but I will need more quick wire and everything too. So let's grab all that stuff. We will head on back over to the highway or the beginning of the highway and uh, we'll jump into some road building. Wow, look at the slow, slow reverse on these things. Yeah, I suppose trucks definitely aren't the way to like get around. I mean, that's what like the Explorer and everything is for. These are supposed to be mainly just for transporting lots of stuff. I mean, they can get going pretty fast, but... Guess they just assumed you'd never really be going in reverse that much. Okay, gather materials and we'll be back. Okay, here we go. Back in the truck. I think I'm bringing about half, almost half of everything I'm going to need. According to my, my blueprints list anyway. Um... And then the amount that we're actually going to use is, uh, you know, hopefully not too much more than this. I do, I do have all the materials, but it just means we'll have to do this in a couple trips. Um, not really the worst thing, especially since we're kind of, I think I'm going to head this way to where our oil and all that stuff is. And I'm going to carry on from that section first. And then we'll come back and we'll carry on for another section once we need to load up on everything again. And then I'll just kind of build a build a big old chunk. We can we can we can talk and chat a little bit, and I can answer some of the questions you guys left for me. And uh, that'll pretty much be the episode for today. Um, like I said earlier, it will be a bit of a shorter one. It's a bit of a different one. I mean, I don't blame people if they wanted to skip it. 
Um, and just, you know, if the, if the next episode's already out, so I'm going to carry on to that one. You're more than welcome to do that. This was just something to give you guys a little something extra to watch while, uh, while I'm away from, from recording for a week. So I'm going to carry it on from the end down here. And I believe I needed to go up. In fact, I think I may actually have to come back a little bit and then go up again. Or was I going to go? Yeah, I was going to go right. I suppose I could do that. I'll do, uh, we'll do a turn. So we'll go corner turn. I'm going to switch to blueprint mode. Lock it in for a second. Shift it into position. A little right hand turn. And then we'll go over from here. So the same thing, we'll kind of lock that in like that. Just kind of get a good idea of where we're actually going. Not that I really ever know where I'm actually going with things, but I just start building. Hope it looks cool and works out. And a lot of people will be like, well, you should, you should start planning things. And I'll be like, planning stuff? What do you mean planning stuff? That sounds suspicious. Okay, so for this one... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a T here. And then if I don't end up using it as the T, I'll just block it off. Because I like to be able to go this way and potentially still be able to go this way if I want to as well. This gets it gets a little annoying here sometimes. Snap on, please. <laughs> there we go. Oh no. Uh there we go. No. There we go. Why are you gonna be so weird? Okay, so that's where our first turn will go. I'm gonna do one more flat. And then I'm gonna have to start going up. This has to go to default, because otherwise if you put it in blueprint, it snaps together real weird, like. Make sure these all stay in line, because one time I didn't have it in line, and I had to redo a massive part of my road section. <laughs> and I was very unhappy about it. So we're going to go up with this one. I want to like send it through there, but like up would probably be good too. So we can be more like up and over everything. And I suppose I could do both. Like if I did like a flat section, like this to a flat. I need to be careful here because I need to make sure I will have enough room for everything. So we'll try the T-split. T-split into a flat, which needs to be moved over. And another one. That should fit in right there. Then we can go back to the ramps. Because I think, I think if I go... 
Actually, no, I, th I think either way it stays on. Because I'm building on the world grid right now. So if I already did have factories like out in the middle of nowhere, I'd still be able to use them properly. Is this not going to work? Is this not, is this not going to be able to go high enough, fast enough? No way. Oh my god, it is. Okay, well. Guess we're going under it. Even though I wasn't gonna. Otherwise, we don't fit. All right, let me get a let me get a question up here. What is what is happening? Why am I under attack? Why am I under siege? Oh, it was the flower up on the ledge there, wasn't it? I was like, let me grab a question. I'm like, oh no, I hear things. This still not gonna. You're gonna tell me this is still not gonna go high enough, fast enough? I'm gonna rage. Or I bust out the question I need to know. It's not going to. <sighs> it's so hard to go up. With like the vehicles, but not have the vehicles like slow down and, and not be able to go up fast enough. So I guess we'll just have to, uh, yeah, purple power slug. Nice. Can I grab from here? Sick. I do you have to go over there? Um, so I think what I'll do then is, uh, I'll just turn right. And then go up again. And just hope and pray. Hope and pray, everybody. Oh, I think I need to... I need to shift the road ramp into position. I don't normally turn and then go up. But I think I have to. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna adjust how often this game auto saves. Okay, that should be fine. Still probably not gonna go up high enough, fast enough. I'm gonna be like, well. The line up? Yeah, it does. It just looks weird because I don't normally do that. It still doesn't go up high enough, fast enough. Oh, God. Yeah, well, now I gotta. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was funny. Um. Okay, new game plan. Um, we'll just thread it through the rock there and we'll just go up somewhere else. Thankfully, there is. Uh, Delete whole blueprints. You can't like group delete them, but actually, you know what? So I'm actually just going to end up bringing this back down now that I know I can't go up because otherwise there's, oops. I'll delete my way back onto the ramp. This is how the professionals do it. Watch me still not make it. Make it? Oh, thank God. That was close. Okay. Let's not make that guy angry again. Oh, he's angry. You know what? I'm going to leave that one for now. And we'll actually just carry on from this one. New game plan. 
New game plan. Start from here and I can answer questions. Let's go out and around. Make sure this is set up properly first. All right. There we go. Okay. First question was... Um... My favorite and least favorite recipes to cook. You know, I get asked this question a lot, and it has come up a lot over the years. You'd think I'd have a good answer for it by now, or just like an answer for it, like off the top of my head. And you know what? I still don't. <laughs> um, although honestly, I would say the the my most favorite things to make these days are um, around the time when COVID kind of started. Uh, I was streaming, so I, I, I started, I've, I've been doing like content for, for many years now. Um, probably, I think we're going on six years this year. And so during the pandemic, COVID, whatever, whatever you want to call it, lockdown, um, I found myself out of a job because the restaurant I was working for, uh, had closed down and I wanted to you know do some do some fun cooking stuff and and make some cool content and what i ended up doing was i ended up learning how to make candy so i started making uh saltwater taffy um this stuff called sponge toffee i started making marshmallows um i mean now i know how to make uh more stuff like gummy candies chocolates like all sorts of stuff so i would say and I mean, ultimately, my end goal, if I continue down, like, the culinary path, I would like to get more into candy making overall. Uh, I'm kind of kind of bored with restaurants at this point, so. But uh, my least favorite thing to make would... I was kind of talking, talking about this with my wife the other day, because I was like, what's my least favorite thing to make? I mean, there's there's all sorts of probably, like, my least favorite things to make it's usually just the things that take like the most tedious work um like one of the things that comes to mind is like anytime i have to like bread something so i need like a flour bowl i need a egg i need eggs i need breadcrumbs and then i have to get messy um but at the same time if you're breading something it usually means you're deep frying something so it's a it's a bit of a trade off. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I thought it, I thought it really shifted over on me. But yeah, I, th I think I think long term, also um, as a content creator, I would like to. This did not go far enough. I'm realizing. Um, I would like to. I mean, the the goal always when I started back in 2018 was to kind of be able to do like variety content. Um, switch it up, sort of do all sorts of things. Like, I'd like to be able to play games. I'd like to be able to do cooking stuff. I'd like to be able to do IRL content. Um, I really like going outside, going hiking. Uh, I tried streaming a hike once, but turns out it's kind of hard to get good cell phone service when you're in the mountains. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's all sorts of, uh, cool things I'd like to be able to do one someday um with the channel and i mean I, i've kind of flopped around from from thing to thing over time i've done gaming i've done um i mean I, i'm a i'm not really a, i wouldn't consider myself a, a master of anything but uh, i like to dabble in as many things as i find interesting so i mean i play a lot of play instruments i play um you know play video games um I, I do a lot of cooking stuff. I like being outside. I like sports. I mean, I, I like pretty much, pretty much most activities I enjoy doing, um, and being able to implement them into content someday would be, would be a lot of fun. I realize I've gone a really far away, really far away from my truck that has all my concrete on it that I'm going to need here soon. Although it looks like we're running out of rods as well, but it looks like we're finally making it into the desert or not no the desert's up here this is the i don't know what this is called but it's like the it's a it's a more resource heavy area i think we'll find more pure nodes around here 
Um, yeah, I, I kind of got off on a on a bit of a, a a bit of a tangent there. I hope I hope I answered the the main question of my my favorite thing to make and my least favorite thing to make, and then we kind of went off on a tangent of my overall content creation. But um, yeah, hopefully that uh, gives you a good idea. But yeah, so like I said, there's just, I know a bit of a to, to keep the tangent going a little bit. I would like to eventually do, um, you know, more cooking content and stuff like that. That is actually, freaking another tangent. <laughs> that is actually how my content started on, not this channel, obviously. I do have a, a separate YouTube channel. It's just called Chef E4, I think, or is it? Yeah. Um, and it has, it started originally as I would, I was calling it kitchen tactics and it was supposed to be like a, like a cooking show type of thing that I thought was going to, was going to be my thing. Um, and then I, I never really ended up following through with that, unfortunately, but I'll, uh, I'll link, I'll link the channel in the, in the description below, but I'll like pin it in and put it in like pin comments as well. If you guys want to uh, check it out at any point, I feel like I should do a, a T split here. Or maybe I should go a little further. I was thinking of going T split and like down off one side, but going down off this side seems kind of pointless because I don't really think there'll be anything over there. But because I want to make sure I have um, like options for for. Place. I'm not going to build the whole road network today, obviously, but I want to be able to put in like a T split and then be like, okay, now I can go down here when I want to or stuff like that. So I think we'll go, but I think I want to turn it. I think I'm going to go this way. Actually, no, I'll do it the other way. Do it facing this way. And then when we go a little further down, I'll just do another one facing that way. I thought I made a four-way junction, but I guess not, because come to think of it, I don't, I don't actually remember making one. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there is one. I can't get these to snap on correctly all the time. It'd be a little finicky. There we go. Snap that into position. Okay, I'm gonna adjust. The auto save is is killing me. How do we auto save interval? There we go. Let's just set this to every. Give me at least every ten minutes. Cut me some slack with the auto saves. Okay, so we are finally out of rods. So let's head back up to our truck. Um, I guess our truck doesn't have any, uh, doesn't have any rods in it. But here, here's what I'll do. Is when I get to the ends like this. I'll put a little storage box. That you need rods for. <laughs> What a personal storage box that you also need rods for. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll stick my con my leftover concrete in there, but I guess it doesn't really work like that now, does it? Okay, I'm back here. Loaded up on some coffee and some more materials so we can get back to building. I'm going to keep going up in this direction. So I think that's the desert over there, that red sandy stuff. So I'm going to try and at least build my road over to there. That's the ultimate goal for now. Well, I mean, the ultimate goal is back to where we came from and have a full loop. But at the very least, if we can get a road all the way out to the, the desert, that'd be great. So this next one came in in a bit of a, a multiple, multiple part question. So I'll, I'll try my best to kind of break it up and and follow along with it for you guys. Uh, let's start off with what other games might we expect from you? Um, and that's actually a really fair question that I've been trying to go through my brain and try and figure out what to do next. Um, whether I'm 
Whether or not I, I finish the Satisfactory series before I implement another game into the mix, um, I actually haven't decided yet. Um, as of right now, I am just going to stick with Satisfactory um, for at least probably the next few months or so. Um, just to really get my, get, make sure I keep my, my YouTube schedule consistent and, uh, you know, it'll hopefully allow me an easier time keeping up with, uh, learning the game as we go forward and things get a lot more complicated. Um, I should have actually gone maybe a couple further before I did this T actually, I'm going to take this one out and replace it. Um, but I was thinking like beyond this, um, I mean, I, I'm interested in all sorts of games, but, uh, I think the main, my main idea post satisfactory anyway, was to maybe do some kind of like story ish game, but also like I, I would do, I'm, I'm a big crafting game guy. Like I always play, I played tons of Minecraft. Um, one of my other favorite and probably my favorite survival crafting game of all time that also had a really good story element, um, yeah, personal opinion anyway, uh, was Subnautica. Um, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with Subnautica, Subnautica or not. Um, if you've never played it, holy God, I heavily, heavily suggest, and I'm very jealous of your first time experiencing Subnautica. Um, if you are familiar with it and have played it before, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I actually have a playthrough, full playthrough of, um, Subnautica Below Zero, uh, which was the quote unquote sequel. Um, also personal opinion, I don't think it was nearly as good, but, uh, I still did have a lot of fun playing. I think I just put that in the wrong position. I did. Um, I still had a lot of fun playing through it and, uh, I'll link that playlist is also on that other channel that I, that I mentioned previously. Um, so I'll, I'll link those, I'll link that stuff down below. Um, and I mean, maybe you got, it's, uh, there's many hours of content that I played through on that as well. So I did like an uncut, um, it's like unedited uncut playthrough from stream. So good amount of hours to keep you guys busy while I take my little break this week from satisfactory. Uh, I do have my face cam on on that one. If that, uh, if that bothers you, I, I, I don't mind, uh, or sorry, if, if that, if that bothers you, I'm, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just old footage from stream. But, uh, yeah, the second part was like other genre, like other game genres that appeal to me. Um, you know, obviously big into crafting. Crafting survival games, I would say, are my biggest, probably survivals. Um, I mean, I like to play, like, I mean, I even like playing ARPGs, uh, strategy games. Um, so I was thinking maybe also some more, like, I don't know what, are the, what they're called, strategy sim games, like City Skylines. Um, so, you know, um, I mean, I, I guess, I guess The Sims. I guess it would fall into that category, but like, you know, stuff like that. Um, things where you can kind of like make up a story as you go along. Doesn't necessarily have a, a narrative, but you can kind of make one. Um, this is where I think I'm going to try going down. And this is where I'm going to fly because this is where it gets a little complicated. And I don't know, this is the way I built my, my blueprints. If there's an easier way of doing this, uh, please let me know. Cause I really hate doing this when I have to, uh, drop them down but this is the way I've been doing it where I build oops you put in um, the four meter ramps down below you go to our road ramp and I will snap it to those foundations that should be matched up correctly And then I really wish that I could just snap these together. Even in blueprint mode, doesn't let me default mode still no. Um, so the only, still the only way I've been able to figure out how to do it 
just to do these stupid foundations. <laughs> Again, hopefully someone knows a better way of doing this than I do. Clearly I don't. But it works. Oops. And then we'll go in and delete them after. It's fine. I feel like I may have just had to make the actual normal section. I probably would have had to do it floating. And so then I could have just used blueprint mode just to like snap it together that way. But I mean, this is, it's not the most annoying thing. I don't typically go down very often. I'm usually going up. So it's not the worst thing ever, I guess. Just trying to justify my, my screw up. <laughs> Try and convince myself it's fine. It's easy to easy to delete though because none of the other foundations are four meters, so and this group dismantled them all. Uh oh. I just realized what I did wrong. Actually no, that's that's probably down far enough, right? I don't, I don't know if I want to go down right to like ground level yet because I don't know where a lot of the nodes are. So I think I can just snap this on. Nice. That's the easy part. You could do this all day. Oh, I almost didn't get that down in time. Yeah, so there's a game that just came out recently. It's called Enshrouded. Um, that's piqued my interest quite a bit. Um, I mean, City Skylines 2. Um, I find that... I think that's pretty cool as well. Um, I mean, the only hard part that I'm running into right now um, is just finding a good game balance that I can uh, play play it and record it at the same time. And not have it be like visually super gross. Uh, so we're just we're rocking with a, a 1080 Ti, so we don't have a a crazy GPU or anything. Got more RAM than I'll ever need, though. I have 64 gigs of RAM. So much RAM the computer can't even use. I don't even think it uses half of it. Oh, did I fall off again? I'm, so I'm flying. Forget you didn't see anything. You saw nothing. Nothing at all. All right, let's move the truck ahead a little bit. Um, but yeah, the last bit of the question was, have you ever done or considered doing games with role play elements mixed in or story driven, even if the game's not story? So yeah, kind of just going back to what I was saying before where um, I mean, mainly I'm a big fan of, of most games and, uh, I hope to be able to make content around a lot of games I enjoy. Uh, I think getting started in my YouTube career, um, is just finding a good balance of, of games I really enjoy and also games that, that people will watch. Um, because, you know, it's it's not like if I started uploading Fortnite <laughs> gameplay, then that's really going to go very well. But that's not the intent either. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was a hopefully that was a good, very long and again tangenty answer to to the questions that you had. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that road there for now until I figure out more. Ooh, actually. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a great road. That's gonna get used a lot, I think, because that goes to a pretty crucial part of the map right here. So I think that like that's a good like all this water around here. I think is really good to have for some of the nodes that are over here. So before I commit to a bunch of road going that way, um, actually no, I'll add some more flat, and that'll be 
That'd be a good, nice little fill in. Grab some concrete out of the back here. Ah, we'll just leave a truck here. Let me find. Let me blink what you do. Let me find. Let me find. Uh, let me find the next uh, question here. A screenshot of them on my phone, so I can be prepared. So I can be prepared. Look at me being prepared. Oh, this is a cool one. This was this was a game related, a satisfactory game related one. Uh, how, do, how do I decide where to make the main part of my base? And that is also a great question because I was actually just going through this the other day. I was looking at the map on the sort of satisfactory calculator.com or whatever it is. Um, I'll have to cut the street down. It's fine. I think you going flat. And uh, I was trying to th I was trying to think of like where would be a good spot to start setting up like the main hub because I've got all these like little factories set up and especially now that we're starting to build like a road um, it would be nice to finally have like a spot to like consider it like a main base like main hub and uh, be able to like I don't know maybe consider building a storage room and and start sending things to be in a more localized position uh, for me to start using, um, in builds. So, you know, instead of having to just always run all the way back to like each of the little, little spots, I could set up trucks that will bring stuff over to wherever, wherever this main hub might be. And then like that main hub can have the, I need a uh, quick wire. I'm going to have to go back to, uh, have to go back to base for this one. But uh, I'll just keep talking for a few minutes as I walk back to the truck just to answer some more of this question. Um, yeah, you know, I was I was thinking I didn't want to be too. I didn't want to like block too many resource nodes or anything like that. I mean, like they could always be like underneath and then just shipped out and, and moved around. But uh, and then I was like, well, I also want to be maybe kind of like middle-ish so i'm sort of localized to things and then i realized well that doesn't really matter if you're just building trucks to, and trains and stuff to carry things around so i kind of i think i've landed on maybe around here um i know these are going to get changed in the future but right now they're just empty voids um there's literally nothing here there's a nice waterfall that that, that falls into it i think my mic just clipped a bit uh, sorry for anyone's ears got popped there. Um, and I think even here, there's only like maybe a couple, a couple nodes here of like concrete and copper, or like just some basic stuff. Um, so I was, I was thinking that this would be a good area to do it from. Um, so I don't know what your guys thoughts are if you guys want to give any feedback on you know how do you guys choose where to build your your main base and hub and stuff i'm i'm thinking here even though it's not the most centralized i mean there's still tons of map up here but i think this is like one of the spots in the map that's sort of uh, quote unquote nothing um so i feel like that'll be it would be a good spot and it's got a good with it being the void there you got a good amount of depth to work with so if you need like a good good deep area to to fit all your your storage however building a storage system works i'm assuming it takes up a lot of room um that'll probably be good to have that and then uh i think there's well i'll head over there I actually built just a bunch of concrete just for funds i was testing out like a, a blueprint of of building with just a massive um it's like a four by four chunk and because uh, I figured that might be a good spot to to set up the the main base, and I'm gonna just leave my truck here actually, because I think it's uh no, it's faster to drive. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking I, I'll show you guys when I get back over there because I thought it would be cool. There's like all sorts of funs like natural archways, kind of like that in front of us. 
where you could put roads and like train lines coming through and I, and it would, I think it would be a really fun way to to build with some of the nature in the game um because i think that's that's a fun part of the the play style for me is to uh to design stuff that kind of blends in with the environment i mean not totally but um i try and make use of of the the world as it is instead of just covering up with like one big flat gray block you know um yeah so hopefully that answered uh question about how i plan where my my main base is going to be um i mean just to, as a side bonus of how i plan where my builds are going to be i make that up as i go uh <laughs> I, I typically just kind of figure out where uh where certain nodes are and i'm like mm, sure that seems like a good spot um there's not not really oh i cut a little bit of air there not really any sort of rhyme or reason to my to my build choices it's just uh you know if it seems like it'll be a, a decent spot and i'm sure there's there's probably better spots of doing things like you know everyone's always telling me it's like go build power in the blue crater it's like one of the best spots for like power setups um i don't know i, I probably will soon but um it's definitely helpful to have you guys around to 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 bounce ideas off of so and hopefully, hopefully that, uh, hopefully that covered that one. All right, materials gathered. New day, new me, new road. Just kidding. Same road. New question, though. This is, this is one that, uh, could probably be an entire series of videos on its own. <laughs> um, just asking to know more about my background in uh food service in, in culinary um and yeah like i said it could be a whole video series but uh i think for in terms of the question i can just kind of run through how i mean how i even kind of got into it um because it's kind of funny to to when i tell people this that um i originally I just, and it's actually in my i think it's in my twitch bio where it says, it's like, did I go to college? And it says, yes, three times, LOL. Because um, I did actually go to college three times. Um, so I originally went to college for architectural engineering technology. Um, and I did not do so good in that. I didn't really, I didn't take it seriously the first time I went to college. Um, I was very young and, and immature and, you know, just kind of, kind of wasted away not wasted i mean like i had some good experiences and stuff but not not i i wasted it educational wise that's for sure um and then so from after that i decided to try aviation engineering technology which was a fancy way of saying airplane mechanic um which uh, was actually super cool but also just one of the most over my head um as I say I'm not I'm not dumb but uh it was a very very difficult course for me um I'm gonna put another T split here I think and uh so I ended up not continuing with that I didn't like fa I I I dropped out of actually I, I failed slash dropped out of architecture um I didn't fail out of the aviation thing I just ended up like pulling out because I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and then technically, I guess, let's call it like three and a half colleges I went to. I went to a bartending school, which was, it, it's like it was a college course. It just wasn't like a, like a full, full college course. Um, so I did that thinking that that would get me a job as a bartender until I could, you know, really figure out what I wanted to do. And then finished that course and went to apply as a bartender in a bunch of different places and no one would hire me. So I was like, well, so much for that. Uh, but, uh, one of the interviews I actually went on, the person was like, well, we're hiring in the kitchen. Do you want to do, do, would you, would you, would you want to do that? And I was like, uh, I just never really thought about it. Um, and I mean, I had 
I've, I've thought about working in restaurants and stuff like a long time ago, but it certainly wasn't in uh, the idea at the time. And uh, so I, I ended up taking it because I was, no one was, like I said, no one was hiring me for a bartender. So I ended up taking it um, immediately, 14 hours a day, uh, pretty much seven days a week. I just, just thrown into the fire. Just, here you go. Good luck. Um, but, uh, it was, it was actually, it was so cool that, uh, I ended up being like, I did that for almost a year. Um, and during that time is when I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to culinary school. So I applied to culinary school for the, the following year. Um, and I ended up, uh, ended up going to culinary school for a, was it a one year program? Yeah, it was like a one year chef course at like a pretty, a pretty good, um, Canadian chef school. I don't know if I want to dox myself or anything, but, um, I guess it doesn't really matter cause I'm not even living in Canada at the moment. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I graduated from culinary school in 2012. I actually graduated on 420, which was freaking awesome. Um, and, uh, from there I ended up during culinary school, I ended up picking up a few more restaurant jobs. One at like a really fancy private club. And then a couple others were just at like... Um, it was like this, like Italian bar type place that did like really cool wood fired pizzas and like all sorts of like fancy, um, I got, I got really into doing like, um, more high end cooking. Oh wait, I don't need a, well, actually, you know what? I will have another one there. Why not? Never heard to have tea sections, right? Uh, where was I? So that was a very, I have a very long and full, it's, well, not, it was like, I, it was 10 years that I, that I worked in restaurants and, and it's, it's only 10 years, but it feels like 20 with the amount of stuff I, that we went through over that time. Um, so yeah, I graduated culinary school in, uh, in 2012, I was working a couple jobs in the city and I was like, you know what? No city moved to the middle of nowhere cottage country to work in a tiny little burger bar on the end of a dock it was awesome for a, for a summer uh so i kind of just jumped around i did contract work for for many years actually am i gonna block so i'm gonna fly for one second here i just want to make sure i'm not blocking any uh resource nodes as i come across here i think i'm gonna go Um, I'm going to go up and then we'll go over. So we'll bust out the old ramps. And pray to God. I just remember to put these all in the same spot. And we don't want to go over. I keep going up for a little bit here. Make sure these are all in line. Sometimes it's hard to build and, and remember what I'm talking about at the same time. I thought about starting like a podcast. But, uh oh. <laughs> I was going to say that, uh... That autosave is going to send me flying off the side, I bet. Ow. I'm just going to fly back up. Screw it. Okay, so let's see. Let me make sure this is actually snapping in the right position. So just so we get a landing. And then I don't need a T split, I just need a turn. Oh, am I going to have to cut that big tree down? That sucks. And I really don't want to. So, 
as much as I normally would not. Actually, I suppose I can just go up. What if I keep going up? Can I go up without interfering with it? Aha! There we go. I didn't want to ruin the environment. Okay, and then we're going to go to corner turn here. And I'm going to forget completely where I was in story time. <laughs> put this road in first. Oh, the pain. There we go. I don't, I feel like there, it's, it's gotta largely be just because of the way I designed them, that they, that blueprints interact together so weirdly, like the road ones specifically. And there's probably a better way of like actually doing it. I'm sure like people that are much better at this game than I am know about. Oh, sorry. Never mind. I thought that was the desert. I see the desert now way off in the distance there. Those red stones back there. That's the desert. Okay. I kind of, uh, where was I? Um, was I at the, was I at the, the burger bar on a dock? I think so. Um, so yeah, anyway, from, so yeah, I did like bunch of contract stuff for a while, stuff like that. Oh, I need more wire. Okay. So I'll, we'll have to go back anyway. Um, I can just talk while we're actually here. I'll, I'll go back. I'll grab stuff. And then we'll resume from my burger on the dock job. <laughs> okay, got materials. We can be back to our, our Q&A. Uh, mainly talking about my culinary career at the moment. So, yeah, I ended up doing a, a lot of, like, just little contract gigs. I'd work for, like, six months at this restaurant, six months at this restaurant. Um, just to move around a lot figure out like what kind of cuisine I like doing the most uh spoiler alert never really found that out um just, just ended up realizing that one I like doing more like fancy stuff um I'll link link my chef Instagram down below as well if you guys want to see like some of my old old food pictures from back in the day um these trees are fine to come down I'm gonna build mostly flat here uh, I don't think I need to build a T-section going this way because I already built a couple going that way. The only ones I might consider would be sending them out this way, but I'll build one just because and then we can just fill it in if we don't use it. So yeah, spoiler alert, never figured out what cuisine I like making the most. Um... And then, so I spent a few years doing like some fancy high-end stuff. I worked at like a, a pretty cool like steak, really small steakhouse. Um, so small that it ended up for a little while just being me and one of my friends that worked there uh, in the kitchen. And then we would occasionally have like another one of our friends like hopping with us if we ever got like crazy busy. But, uh, yeah, so there was a lot of, like, experimenting over the years, just trying to figure out, like, what I liked. And then eventually figuring out that, you know, I really like candy making. Um, but, you know, I've done stuff like, uh, I did a couple, like, culinary competitions. Um, you, you'll see on my Instagram if you go check that out. Um, I didn't, I didn't post about it, but, and I've never actually been, like, on TV uh, in a cooking show, but I've worked on cooking shows. Uh, I worked on chop. Was it chopped? No, 
Iron, Iron Chef Canada. That's what it was. Uh, I did a couple episodes uh, with them. Um, I do remember the, one of the things that I, I ended up setting up was... Oh, I think I faced it the wrong way, did I? Yeah, I think I, I think I meant to send that in that way. Um, yeah, one of the things I, I set up like this like cheese display um, that I believe is in the episode. I, I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but... Um, yeah, I, I just had I had some friends who who uh, ended up working on those shows, and they ended up getting me some like little side work here and there. Yeah, never, never. I did apply to go on the shows, and I even interviewed to be on Chopped, but uh, they I didn't. Uh, it was like phone interviews that you that you did, and I only made it that that had like four rounds of phone interviews you had to make make it through before you actually got to like the actual interviews um and i only made it through like the first couple of phone interviews and then i didn't get any further unfortunately um and you know from there i just uh eventually we hit the the covid19 pandemic where most restaurants got shut down and many of my uh, culinary friends ended up leaving the industry entirely, um, just finding new jobs, new careers. Some went back to school, some just did other stuff. Um, and then I ended up doing a, I worked like a little bit of construction for a while, um, while I was doing my, my candy company, um, that I tried doing during COVID, um, because people ended up being so, uh, so interested in watching my candy get made on stream that people wanted to buy it. So I ended up uh, eventually shipping it um, all across the world. Actually, I, the furthest I ever shipped candy was I was living in Canada and someone in the UK bought it. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I might I might set up the, the candy store again someday, but that'll be that'll be a down the road future chef thing. I think it would be cool, though, to, especially if if I end up being successful in any way from YouTube that I would maybe be able to uh, carry on my, my candy legacy. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much start to finish my like step-by-step -step culinary career up until this point, because I mean, I'm not really doing much culinary stuff anymore. Um, I mean, I, st I still love cooking and everything. And like I said, I still love candy making, but it's just restaurants. I'm not uh, particularly into uh, working at them anymore. So yeah, ho hopefully that was like a little bit of an insight into, uh, into my culinary journey. Um, but yeah, like I said in the beginning, this could be a, a whole series of videos. Could be just me talking about things from from my culinary life it was, it was about 10 years 10 11 years um yeah like i said a lot a lot happened in those years it's just so much easier to fly when i'm trying to do that Oh no! Ow! That was not what was supposed to happen. It, like lagged as I was trying to jump onto it. There we go. All right, I think I had a couple more questions here. one more it's another another good one about like past Jeffrey um, it was uh, do you have a favorite old school game and so just a, a bit of a I mean this would be instead of just telling you the games that I that I liked I'll kind of give you a quick little quick little journey through 
gaming with Sheffrey as he as I was growing up. Uh, first system we ever got was Super Nintendo. No, first system we ever had was the original Nintendo NES that our one of our cousins gave to us, and we we're playing like Mar like Mario was was a big one. Like the Duck Duck Hunter game and stuff was uh, was really cool too. Like then we got into like the Super Nintendo when it was. I think we got into the NES about when the Super Nintendo was was either out or just coming out. Um, and then so yeah, we went into like Super Nintendo. We started playing we had more Mario games. Um, one of the ones I really liked was so for those that might be familiar with with Super Nintendo was the old Mario Paint. Like with the mouse pad and like everything, like I thought that was really cool for for back in the day. Um, yeah, from there, well, well, yeah, we also had Game Boy Color. I kind of forget where that fell into the mix. You know, gotta play the gotta play the Pokemon games, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, we had like this Bass Pro fishing game that had like an actual vibration pack. It was it was really cool at the time. Uh, should I go down here or should I, I feel like I should stay up like as the main highway and then have spots where you can like branch off. So like, let's go, let's go one T split down the other way. And then a little further down, I'll put in another one going back the other way. Snap that into position. Uh, from there, we went to N64, which was probably one of my favorite systems of all time, I would say. Um, you know, Mario Parties, Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, uh, Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong 64, uh, um, GoldenEye, uh, I... Sadly, actually still owned one of the Jungle Green N64s up until about seven or eight years ago now, uh, when I ended up having to sell it with uh, just a bunch of like, probably what you would consider now would probably bring in anywhere about $2,000 in like, games and controllers system all that stuff i think i sold at the time for like eight or nine hundred um and I, it's not the really the money that bothers it's like it just suck. i'm just like man i really wish i still had that like i would play that so much uh, but yeah so n64 was like a big big part of my life but if we want to go like way way back i think the very first game that i ever really played I don't know if I can remember the name of it. It was, I remember my dad brought home this like work laptop. This was like mid nineties. Um, when I, when I first saw like my first ever like computer game, I guess you call it. Um, and I, I can't remember what it was. It was some sort of like, there was a rabbit and there was a train. And I think it was like maybe like math related or it was some sort of like probably educational stuff at the time. I do remember a lot of like the educational games from like school and the like um growing up that type of thing. But uh yeah, post uh, we played N64 for years. Uh Snowboard Kids. Um man, like it's the the list of games I played on N64 were 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 many. Uh and then eventually we moved we skipped PlayStation and X we never had a PlayStation or an Xbox. Um, I know I, I had a couple friends who had like Xboxes and stuff, but we immediately jumped into PlayStation two, um, and would play a lot of games on there. like need for speed. There was a Corvette game that we really like playing with my dad. There's a game I really liked at the time. It's called Metropolis mania. That's probably like a out of nowhere out of left field. No one probably knows what that is, but I thought that was, I think there was like an original old type of like. I want to call it's not like anime, but like cartoony city skylines ish 
Apps, uh, Sims. I don't know. It's it was it was a cool game though. Um, but like, but yeah, from there, PS3, then to PS4, and then I finally built my first PC in 2018. But my favorite old school game. It's, I'm going to say my favorite, my two, fa I, there's going to be two because there's two that I can, I can think like, think of that. I'm like, yes, I used to play those religiously, which would be Donkey Kong 64 and as a like solo gamer and then for multiplayer, because we used to play a lot. Like I'd play a lot with my brother and then I'd play a lot with like our, our we had a couple of cousins that we played a lot with too, was snowboard kids. Those are like the two, like those are N64 games. I would say those are like my two old classics that I will, I will probably never forget. So hopefully that answered the question of uh that was a very long way of saying what my what my old favorite old school game was but at least you got like a little brief history of like what my gaming has been over the years um i've i've tried like atari and 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 sega and and stuff like that like they were like i was born in in the it was what, 91 early 90s um so like I, I got to experience a lot of the, a lot of the early, early game systems just at a, just a maybe younger age than I could have fully appreciated them. But I think when N64 was around, I was really old enough to, to really appreciate games because I still talk about it to this day where I think N64 made one of the biggest like technological jumps in video gaming going from like the 2D to I think that's the thing though is to go from 2d to 3d gaming is 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 quite unbelievable especially at the time when you know there was really nothing like it but yeah super long way of saying my favorite old school games donkey kong 64 and Snow war kids i mean there's there's others where i'm just like oh that's a really good game too um and i mean it would be really cool to maybe one day do like some vintage gaming videos um just do like not necessarily dedicate like a whole series uh, we could do like a series of like just playing vintage different vintage games but i think that'd be really cool a bit of a nostalgia hit for everybody or for the younger audience they'd be like what in the f did you guys used to play back then Yeah, honest, honestly, I think I can probably end this episode here, um, just so I don't have to just stop, so I don't have to cut out too much. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was cool to 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 just kick back, relax, a bit of a talking head video for you guys, I guess, even though you can't see my actual head. Um, and uh, you know, to know a little bit more about me, a bit more about my my gaming and my my chefing career um so thank you guys again for all the the great questions and all the support um maybe we could do this again in the future it doesn't always have to be a, a road building episode but if i'm ever finding myself like hey i need to just kind of relax and and step away from building then we can just kind of go on a little adventure do some some kind of mindless stuff in the game like hooking up all these like street lights and everything that i'm gonna have to do someday um and we can just kind of answer answer some questions and and you guys can get to know me a little better um yeah thank you guys again so much um i like i said no video on thursday this week this will be the tuesday episode and i'll see you guys again soon for the next one where we're gonna build more power have a good one